Hi, welcome back to Podcastage. My name is Bandrew and I believe in transparency. That's why I need to tell you, this video was initially supposed to be a bit where I broadcast 90s television shows behind me. Then I learned about something called copyright law. That means I'm not able to do that, it's illegal. The compromise I made is I will put public domain images of important 1990s events behind me while I review maybe the most 1990s microphone of all time. That's right, you heard me correctly. Today I'm reviewing a vintage microphone that nobody has the courage to review but me. We are looking at the LabTech AM-242 Desk Boom Mic with Bass for PC Multimedia Applications. As far as the pricing of this microphone, I regret to inform you that I'm unable to provide you with that information because this has been discontinued by the manufacturer. I do, however, recommend that you avoid paying the inflated prices that are being asked for this absolutely legendary microphone. Then, for the setup of this review, I wanted to remain consistent with 1990s technology, so I am running it through a 2019 Rode VXLR Plus, then running through a 30-foot Neumann XLR to XLR cable, and that is running into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen, 48 volts is turned on, and my gain is set at 7 o'clock. 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock is what it's set at. Check the lower third to see how... I, I almost broke character. That would be tragic. <laughs> Check the lower third or the doobly-doo to see how much I boosted it in post. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. You will, of course, get the long stick bug microphone. You will get a desktop mount so you can put this directly on your desk, as well as a mount to mount this to your computer monitor, and some registration information. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone epitomizes 1990s technology. It has an all-plastic build that feels like absolute garbage, as though it will crumble in your hand. The bases feel equally terrible and instill absolutely zero confidence. And if it matters to you, this microphone is made in China. Then as far as the specs, the microphone does not disclose the polar pattern that it uses, but it does disclose that it has a frequency response of 100 hertz to 16 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 47 dBV Pascal, a mic power source voltage of 1.5 volts DC, and an impedance of 2000 ohms. Now I am rotating the LabTech AM242 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees, this is the rear. Continue around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle, and then we will rotate and end at the front of the mic. Now let us go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this microphone. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. For the next couple of tests, I do have to leave this beautiful backdrop and return to the regular studio. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to see what kind of proximity effect this thing has. What kind of proximity effect this thing has. Now I'm about three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it sounds. Now I'm about one foot away from the AM-242. About two feet away from the AM-242. And about four feet away from the LabTech AM-242. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for all the gamers out there, now I am typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Next, because the microphone comes with such an outstanding desktop stand, I want to see what kind of shock rejection it can offer. I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I'll tap on the actual base of the microphone. Now we're back with a beautiful backdrop, and I will tap on the microphone's body to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now typically right here, I'll include a comparison of the mic that I'm reviewing and a bunch of other microphones that are available so we can see how the mic stacks up against the competition. I think that's a bit unfair. 
This microphone is of such high quality, I think it only requires one comparison. Like always, we'll start on the microphone that we're reviewing. This is the LabTech AM242, running into the Focusrite 18i20, gain set at 3 o'clock, and here is how it's sounding. And now I'm speaking into the Neumann U87AI. This costs around $3,600. I'm running this directly into the Focusrite 18i20 second gen. 48 volts is on, and my gain is set at around 11 o'clock. Make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these microphones in post. There you go. That is how the Neumann U... I'm going to get killed for this. (laughs) That is... That... That is how the Neumann U87 AI compares to the LabTech. Now, I can't believe I'm saying this, but let us jump to the music test. I wish that I could go back there and watch X-Files while it aired Before Twitter ruined the world, making experts of everyone When I say go back there, I'm talking about going back to the 1990s. It was just a much simpler time, and I long for it so much. Everybody was not an expert on every issue in the world. You didn't have to worry about much. You could just watch your X-Files, go on a forum and talk about Mulder and Scully, and then do whatever the hell you want. You didn't, you weren't connected all, it was just beautiful. It's why, 1998 microphone, whatever. Let's go to the conclusion, if there even is one, because how can you do a conclusion about this microphone? It's clearly perfect. All right, I'm going to drop the bit right here because I do not feel like doing a full outro with the pros, the cons, the opinions, the recommendations, all of that stuff. It's just too much work for a joke for April Fool's Day. I will say, I am surprised it still functions. I was surprised how decent it sounded when you connect it to decent gear, and I really was surprised by the fact that I didn't hate it with all of my being on the electric guitar. With fuzz guitar, I kind of enjoyed it. I'm not going to use this ever again. But I was surprised that it wasn't the worst thing I've ever heard. And I don't have anything else to say because this was just meant to be a goofy one-off video for April Fool's Day. It's not a prank or anything. It's just a mic that I had that I thought would be funny to put through a bunch of tests. I hope it gave you a laugh because I laughed a lot while filming and editing the body of this. It is just ridiculous. I wish I could have gone more full 90s, but this is as 90s as it could be. The background pictures, I'm really not sure about them, but it is what it is. It's just a goofy video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you don't fall for anything too crazy today, and... Have a great Friday and weekend. I'll see you next week with a regular video. These people are amazing. Bye. This really may be the dumbest video I've ever made. It makes no sense. Why am I spending so much time on this when I could be reviewing a proper mic? (laughs) 